Hi, I'm Dr. Zeb Hogan. I'm a fish biologist. I'm a research professor at the University of Nevada, Reno, and I'm the CMS COP appointed counselor for fish. I'm here today to talk about World Fish Migration Day. It happens on May 21st, 2016. We don't have uh, many opportunities to think about the importance of free-flowing rivers and migratory fish. So this is one day when everybody can come together, take time to reflect on the importance of the river near where they live. Take time to reflect on the importance of healthy rivers and healthy fish populations. And so this is important. Migratory fish all over the world are threatened with habitat fragmentation, with dams, habitat degradation, pollution, overfishing. And so this is our chance to think about these issues and come up with solutions to better protect rivers and fish. People may not know about the epic fish migrations, uh, white shark migrations from South Africa to Australia, uh, Chinook salmon that migrate from the ocean thousands of kilometers upstream to spawn. They're spawning at 2,000 meter elevation. Or the longfin eel in New Zealand. Longfin eel, it's an eel that can live over 100 years. Uh, it's born out in the ocean, migrates 1,000 kilometers to freshwater rivers and streams in New Zealand, and then at the very end of its life, it migrates back out to the ocean to spawn. Some migratory species are umbrella species. And so if you protect the umbrella species, a lot of times the largest migratory fish, you also protect the entire ecosystem. Migratory fish are very important to people, important for food. One example, in the Mekong River, 40 to 70% of, of fish are migratory. And 60 million people living along the Mekong are getting the majority of their protein from fish. So fish, we, we may not think of them, uh, you know, the, the first thought we have, a migratory animal, we think of birds, we think of mammals. But migration in fish is critically important, and we need to protect it. One of the main objectives of World Fish Migration Day is to raise awareness about the existence and importance of migratory fish. People can take part in World Fish Migration Day in any way they would like, with a coloring contest of migratory fish, with a run along a river, with a river cleanup, with a fish release to try to restore fish populations, with the removal of a dam that's blocking fish migrations, uh, with a presentation discussing an important fish in your area. So there are really dozens, if not hundreds, of different ways that people can participate in World Fish Migration Day. And the whole point of World Fish Migration Day is to get people from all over the world to participate and think about the importance of free-flowing rivers and migratory fish. And so there are going to be people in North America, in South America, Europe, the Middle East, Asia, Australia, all celebrating the importance of migratory fish on the same day. One, one fish that I've spent a lot of time studying is the Mekong giant catfish. It's a critically endangered catfish that's endemic to the Mekong River. And it's the current record holder for the world's largest freshwater fish. So these catfish, they get up to 650 pounds and they live in freshwater. They're also highly migratory. They move out of uh, the Tonle Sap Lake in Cambodia, down the Tonle Sap River, and up the Mekong to spawn. And dams along the Mekong may cause the extinction of the Mekong giant catfish. The story of the Mekong giant catfish can teach us about some of the threats that migratory fish face all over the world. A, a lot of people don't realize uh, the impact that dams can have on migratory fish. People tend to think of dams as clean energy, and they don't realize what's going on underneath the water. But in terms of migratory fish, a lot of times there's nothing worse than a dam. And so if, if people can start to think about the impacts that their lives and the development choices we make are having on fish, I really think that's the first step. So the first step is just being aware that these migratory fish are there, that they need to move up and down the river to complete their life cycle, and then to think about the different things that we might be able to do to help these fish survive. One of the things that's gaining steam right now is the idea of dam removal. So actually uh, looking at old dams that may, maybe aren't producing electricity any longer or no longer serving any purpose and trying to get rid of some of those old dams to open up big stretches of river for migratory fish. I'm a CMS scientific appointment counselor and my role with CMS is to work with the scientific council to provide scientific advice to CMS parties and to the conference of parties. Uh, I also am an advocate for the work of CMS and an advocate for the wise management of migratory species. And that's really what CMS is all about, is good management and conservation 
especially of threatened migratory species. And it's the only convention of its kind anywhere in the world. Uh, and CMS, I mean, World Fish Migration Day, the, the link between the Convention on Migratory Species and World Fish Migration Day, there is a, a strong link. With CMS, we tend to work over the long term. We tend to focus on policy at the governmental level for the most part. World Fish Migration Day is a way to get everybody excited about the issues that we deal with in CMS every day. So with CMS, we're dealing long-term policy, government, and then on the other side with World Fish Migration Day, we're just trying to get everybody interested in the issues that we deal with uh, at CMS on a regular basis.